So hi everyone, this is our third video with Math Club and today we're going to be going over the I Am One textbook chapter 3 for 3.1.2, 3.1.3, and then 3.1.4. And we're going to start off with 3.1.3 with Olex. I'm Olex and uh, today I'll be going over parallel lines and per perpendicular lines. Um, so by definition, parallel lines are lines that do not meet. So for example, in this graph right here, um, if you were to extend these two lines and uh, they did not meet at any point, that means they would be parallel lines. And for perpendicular lines, um, the angle between those two lines um, is 90 degrees. So for example, if we have two lines that look like this, and you look at the point that they meet, and if the angle between the two lines right here is 90 degrees, that means the lines are perpendicular. Um, so let's see how the slopes of these uh, types of lines relate to each other. So, so first is the parallel lines because they're a bit uh, more straightforward. Um, with parallel lines, it's pretty clear that uh, the slopes have to be the same. Uh, because if you notice that if we have two lines with slightly different slopes, so for example, something like this, um, you can notice that if you extend, if you extend the lines into um, one of the two directions, you'll find that eventually the lines will cross over each other. And this just means they're not parallel. However, if they have the same slope, um, in any direction you extend them, um, they uh, grow at the same time, so they will never meet. Um, so for the for our first definition, par definition, parallel lines have the same slope. Um, now let's look at perpendicular lines because they're a bit less straightforward. Uh, with perpendicular lines, whatever the slope of uh, the first line is, so let's say we had a line with a slope of um, one half. The slope of the perpendicular line is the negative of the reciprocal of this number. Um, so for the perpendicular line of this line, um, of this line, it'd be reciprocal of uh, one over two is two over one, so it'd be negative two over one, which is just negative two. It's just negative two. Um, let's try another slope. So let's try something like three. Well, the reciprocal of three is one third, because this is three over one, and then reciprocal is uh, switching the denominator numerator, um, and uh, take the negative of that, so we get negative one third. Um, let's try one last one. Um, let's do something like uh, negative four. Reciprocal of negative four is negative one fourth, and that turns into one fourth because negative of negative one fourth is just one fourth. Um, so that's the practice problem. Uh, let's find the slope of the perpendicular line to this line, and also the slope of the parallel line to this line. Um, so first of all, the first thing we need to do is find the slope of the line itself. Um, and if we remember from last video, slope is rise over run. Um, so if we take any two points, let's do the origin and then this point here, um, the rise will be 2, and the run is just 1. So we know the slope of this line is 2 over 1, which is just 2. Um, now right away from this, we know that the slope of the parallel line to this line will also be 2, because the slopes are the same. Um, now for the perpendicular line, um, the slope is the negative of the reciprocal of 2. Um, so we can say that the slope for the perpendicular line is just uh, negative 1 half. So um, that's perpendicular and parallel lines. Hello, I'm Isaac. And uh, rigid transformations are transformations that don't change the shape and size of the shape. So three types of rigid transformations are reflections, rotations, and translations. These all change the position of the shape, but they don't actually you know, shape, change the shape and size of the 2D object. So for example, reflections, as you can see here, triangle ABC is reflected across the vertical line. And there's a, there's a triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. And these two triangles are identical in shape and size, but they are faced in opposite directions. So that's one, um, you know, one bridge transformation. There's rotation, where you select a point of rotation and you just uh, rotate the triangle around that point and these, again, uh, these two triangles, they're identical in shape and size. It's just that their positions in uh, a graph or not necessarily a graph, they're just positions in general are just different. And translations, which is just moving the, tri not the triangle, but the 2D object in uh, just, just moving it really. Um, so all of these, they don't change the shape and size of the original 2D object, but they do just shift it or move it in some way. Okay, so uh, we had Isaac explain to you the concept of the three types of rigid transformations. And now we're gonna walk through the different examples, uh, some practice problems and examples. So we have 
uh, first up, we have a translation problem. And an example question would be, translate figure A two units to the left. So let me, looking at this graph, we can, this would be two, one, two, two, one, two, and one, one. So as Isaac explained, translation just moves the entire object without changing its shape or um, anything else. So to translate this figure A to the left two units, we look at, so we think left means the X axis, left and right means X, up and down mean Y. So we have points one, one, two, one, two, two, and one, two. To move everything to the left two units, you look at the x, um, x coordinate for every point you have and you subtract two because that's moving to the left. So negative one, one, and then zero, one, zero, two, negative one, two. And graphing this out, you get this point, this point, uh, this point and this point. I'll do this with blue. So this is A prime. That is your new translated shape. Okay, and our next question, let me erase this. Okay, so our next question, we have rotation, which is rotate figure B 90 degrees clockwise about the origin. So looking at this question, we know that it's going to be 90. Oh. Looking at this question, we know that it's going to be clockwise. So we know it's going to move in this direction and it's about the origin. That means we're moving the whole shape. So we're moving figure B relative to the origin, which is zero, zero. And a good way to think about uh, rotation relative to the origin in this case would be, so if this is Let's say this is two, one. Let's say this is uh, three, three. And this is uh, two, three. Okay. So if we were to rotate this clockwise, we would think about it. Imagine you're shifting your axes 90 degrees clockwise. You're rotating the entire axis. So if this is to one here, this is two, this is one. When we rotate, we're gonna want this to be two and this to be one, your first point. And same thing for the other points. If this is three, three, our next point will be three and three. And our last point, we have, this is two and this is three. So we wanna move two and then we want to move up three. And this would be our figure. In class, you'll go over these kind of rotations with um, patty paper or whatever your teacher uses, but that's this is another way to think about it. So for reflection, we have the question reflect figure C across the Y axis. And so reflecting just means look at your shape, look at what you're reflecting across. In this case, it is the Y axis. So this line here, and then we want to Basically, we are making the y-axis our line of symmetry. Meaning each side from the y-axis is going to be the same thing. So let's say this is negative one, one, uh, negative one, uh, four, and this is negative two, three, or negative two, two. So when reflecting, we would see that this is 
one away from the y-axis and one away from the x-axis. So we want to keep this line straight. So this line is also going to be one away. This is two units away from the y-axis. So we want this point over here to be two units away from the y-axis. And this one is one unit away. So we want this point to also be one unit away. Let me make this to scale. And connect the points. And this is C prime. And our last question is, what transformations are used to get from figure A to figure B? So, in st we, so first we have to look at both shapes. We see that figure A is a triangle facing upward or the, the top point facing upward and this one, the top point facing the bottom. So that automatically tells us that one of the transformations we will have to use is reflection. So what reflection could we use? In this case, we want, let's see, let's say we want to use one reflection and then we want to use one translation. There are different ways to solve this question, but normally they want you to, they give you a certain um, number of moves you can do. So to first reflect this, we want to see the easy, first thing we could think of, or the easiest thing we can think of is reflect across the x-axis. And using these coordinate points, we know that by reflecting the shape across the x-axis, we will get, so this is two units away, this is also two units away, this is two units away, this will also be two units away, this is three units away, so this will also be three units away. So this is our reflected shape, but we still haven't gotten to, to where B is, so we need one more, and that would be our translation. So from here, we notice that we have to compare the uh, respective points. We have to compare uh, points that are in the same position each time. So we look at this right-hand side point, and which is the same as this right-hand side point. This vertex is the same as this vertex. This vertex is the same as this vertex. So we see that everything is shifted from this, from this blue triangle right here. We see that everything is shifted three units to the right. So in this case, we would say the uh, we would say when we answer the question, we need one reflection, or we say reflect across the x-axis, and then translate three units. Make sure you write units to the right, and that is how you get from figure A to figure B.